even though it's the summer lull for Canadian politics, which means that they're not standing in the House of Commons, and all members of Parliament are kind of doing their own thing, where you have occasionally the A-team from both sides are making appearances in the media, but more specifically, the two most important people, which is a very weird thing to say, in Canadian politics, Justin Trudeau, Pierre Polyev, constantly making headlines. Pierre Polyev is making a massive advance this summer by gaining more notoriety through rallies, through different appearances. And while Trudeau, the longer he stays in office, the worse things are getting. And we're seeing this with the cabinet shuffle, which has been a catastrophe, he says with a smile on his face for the liberals. Welcome back to another video, everybody. This is going to be a great one. Before we get into it, I want to encourage you to give a like and subscribe if you haven't already. It's absolutely free to do so. You just hit that subscribe button down below. Scroll down with your finger or if you're on a mouse or whatever it is or on a TV. A lot of people are doing that these days watching uh, YouTube videos in their living rooms on TVs. And once you subscribe, there's a little bell notification that pops up. I know I say this repeatedly, but a lot of people don't have it enabled. Why should you enable it? Well, it adds a layer of insurance to make sure that government suppression, Justin Trudeau's personal algorithm, YouTube suppression, all of those things don't take effect and that you can actually be notified of these videos. It's a very important thing. As you're aware, Bill C-11, Bill C-18, all of these things are working components for, you know, the machine to not allow people like myself and other YouTubers to actually be, you know, have a voice per se, because we all know that these these Big shots want to have uh, mainstream media as the only narrative out there. And speaking of mainstream media, we're going to start off with <clears throat> this Langley Advanced Times article. And they're kind of shitting on Pierre Polyev. And we're just going to take a read and see because there's, there's points that they're making that the liberal or the left-leaning media is attacking Pierre for saying housing, housing, housing. That's how he's going to fix housing. You just say it enough times. You get people angry. And there's some truth to that because a lot of the problems right now in Canada are surrounded by housing. And Pierre Polyev actually has really good points to break down all of these barriers. But we're going to read the article and see what's up first. And then we got some videos to watch as well as Pierre and Freeland and things like that. So and a poll update. So you're going to want to stay for the entire duration of the video or for as long as you can, because there's going to be a lot of juicy information in this video. Painful truth, how to become prime minister. The next prime minister will convince voters that they can fix the housing crisis, which is a weird manipulation of an article because the next prime minister of Canada, this guy right here, Pierre Polyev, actually can fix the housing crisis. The way that the liberals have managed the money, the way that they work hand in hand, the government works hand in hand with the Bank of Canada, these are all things that can actually be fixed. So it's not a theory, it can actually be done. Under previous conservative governments, the housing was not in crisis mode. We had a much better economy under previous conservative governments. Pierre Polyev wants to be Canada's next prime minister, and he has a fairly decent shot at achieving that goal. And I've said this before several times. My personal belief is that we're going to just win a majority government for the Conservative Party of Canada. That I'm calling it now. So when the elections happen and everyone's like, whoa, who said what and who thinks that Conservatives are going to win? Make sure you come back to this channel because... I like calling it ahead of time, and so far we've been right on quite a few things. Fortunately, we are not facing a federal election this year, fingers crossed, but we will likely see one in 2024, so the party leaders are girding their lions, particularly Pierre Polyev, who has been popping up wherever there might be a microphone and a crowd of potential voters, which is very true. Pierre has been campaigning and rallying. I guess you can't call it campaigning because it's a weird semantic thing, but he's been rallying really hard. He's been making a big splash on social media, and he's been gaining a lot of popularity not just because he's f trudeau or anti trudeau which seems to gain a lot of momentum these days but because his actual policies the things that he talks about the plans that he wants to implement are really sustainable things and that's why he's as popular as he is i have a theory of how pierre polyev could win the uh, coming election all he needs to do is say three magic words over and over and over again housing 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 and well, I mean, 
there's a little bit of validity to that because housing and our economy is so fragile. When you hit those talking points, it does tap into people's emotions and get them riled up. But Pierre does have solutions. He's got great solutions. We're going to take a look at some videos very shortly here. That's it. All he has to do is remind Canadians of their biggest issue, and he could steamroll right over Justin Trudeau. The Liberals, and Trudeau in particular, have tried to claim a monopoly on a specific kind of Canadian identity. Canada as a compassionate middle power, a nation of immigrants and free healthcare, a place that sends out soldiers in UN blue helmets to do peacekeeping missions. How much does your conception of Canada matter when no one under 40 can buy a home unless they're a successful doctor, lawyer, or drug dealer and that's true and that's what pierre talks a lot about but it's not just <clears throat> theories it's actual plans and this video that we're going to take a look at is pierre expressing a real plan how we need to build and build and build which means cutting red tape which means removing gatekeepers what do those things mean well those things mean there's a lot of permits that need to be acquired in order to build new construction under conservative government he wants to decrease the amount of time it takes to get a permit or remove a lot of these things totally because those are gatekeepers. It blocks you from getting something done in a timely fashion. So let's take a look at this video here. This is on Pierre's YouTube channel. My rent's going from my rent's going from seven fifty up to thirteen hundred dollars this month. That's basically one whole paycheck of mine. What about putting something in for landlords? that they can't jack up the rent that much. Doesn't matter where you are in Canada, everyone's asking the same question. Why is rent doubled, mortgages have doubled, and down payments have doubled? And it's happened from coast to coast to coast to coast, everywhere in the country. Um, and the answer is we, don't, we actually don't have enough apartment buildings. And so there's not enough competition. If there were more apartments, you go to your landlord and say, if you jack up the rent, I'm out. I'm gonna go to move, to, move down the street are moved to the, to the next town over. But the problem is in Canada, our popu like last year our population grew by a million people. And we built about 200,000 homes. We need one home for every roughly two people. So the, <clears throat> in other words, we would need to, to house a million people, we need at least a half, half a million, a million homes per year. year. We're building not even half of that. So every year, the shortage of housing grows by about 300,000 units. And that empowers the land speculator and the landlord because they have con control over a scarce commodity called housing and they have all the power. The only way to break up, you can, te you can tell them to lower the rent, but then they'll, the, 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 the reality is there's just not enough place to put people. So what we need to do is clear away the bureaucracy and allow more construction. We need to build more homes. The landlords in the States are just as greedy as the landlords in Canada. Why is it that housing is half the cost down there? Why is Vancouver and Toronto more expensive than New York City? America has 10 times the people. Why is Vancouver more expensive than Singapore? They have, Singapore has 2,000 times more people per square kilometer than Canada, yet it's more expensive in Vancouver than Singapore. And I think this needs to be said that having expensive housing and an expensive economy is not inherently a bad idea where it becomes bad is our wages don't reflect the cost of living if the average household income in canada was 150 200 000 a year sure i mean then it would be way more sustainable people would be happy be able to go do things right there are a lot of rich countries out there where the majority of the people the average household income the average salaries are very high and when you go to these countries things are very expensive because well they have independent wealth within their borders canada doesn't have that our minimum wage is really low our wages are really low and that's why people are suffering is the cost of living is going higher and higher and higher the cost of housing is going higher and higher and higher but our wages are still trailing behind and it's just it's not sustainable it's not sustainable the answer is our bureaucracies across this country are blocking construction so we don't have enough homes and i want to remove that bureaucracy by saying to the cities you either speed up and lower the cost of permits or i'll pull back some of your infrastructure money and those that that, that perform that, that deliver the permits quickly they'll get a big fat building bonus to reward them for it 
They'll get more roads built by people like you. And uh, that's how we're going to incentivize to get the gatekeepers out of the way and build, build, build. The biggest thing that the liberals have done is put a, put up so much red tape. They've made things so difficult for Canadians to actually get things done. Even building a shed in your backyard. Building a shed in your backyard, you need to get the right permits if it's over like 8 feet or 10 feet by 10 feet. It's insane. It's insane. You never, you don't even own the land when you own the land here in Canada. Everything must go through this bureaucracy of a system and it's just so frustrating because you can't get anything done which is why you see backlogs with all of these big companies even airlines have all these crazy backlogs people just can't keep up our standards don't match the flow of the economy it's very weird that the liberals have implemented this type of system here in canada which is why excuse me you're seeing them just totally tank in the polls Conservatives are at around 35%. Liberals are at 31%. NDP is still around 19 I suspect when it comes time to voting, you're going to see the Liberals drop into the 20s, and you're going to see the Conservatives get a little bit higher than 35%. This is going to be one of the most interesting and detrimental federal elections we've ever seen here in Canada, which is why you see them reshuffling their cabinet from the liberals perspective. And which is why you see Pierre Polyev encourage them to shuffle out Justin Trudeau. This Trudeau government in Ottawa, I guess they've got a cabinet shuffle coming. What do you think? Who do you think should be shuffled? All of them. Well, why don't we go through the list, okay? Because I know that Justin Trudeau is watching us all right now, and he'll be very interested in our last-minute advice to help make that decision. So, yes, deck chairs on the Titanic. That's a good way of putting it. But you know, we're trying to be helpful, aren't we? Or we're trying to be a helpful opposition. But you know, when you think about it, after eight years. Life costs more, work doesn't pay, housing costs have doubled. Crime, chaos, drugs and disorder reign in our streets. At the end of the day, there's one minister who is responsible for it all. He's the minister that's in charge of everyone. The buck stops with him. He is responsible for the higher prices, the higher taxes, the growing crime, the endless corruption. Why don't we shuffle out Justin Trudeau while we're at it? Shuffle him out. Oh, my goodness. Canada would be a much better place if that were the case. Much better. But I'd like to pass the question off to you. If there is somebody in particular that you would like to see get shuffled out who hasn't yet been, you know, ob- aside from the obvious Justin Trudeau, who would it be? That's actually where we're going to end the video, everybody. It's getting a little long here. I don't want to cross into the 15 or 20 minute mark. So we're going to end it right there. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to give a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you all in the next one. Thanks so much for making it to the end of the video. If you want to support the channel financially, you can do so by checking out the merch shop linked right up there. Or if you want to do something for free, which is also absolutely acceptable and highly encouraged, you can subscribe right there. If you want to continue watching videos like this, you can do so by clicking or tapping right there to watch the next upcoming video. And if you want to watch a little bit of different content, but also Canadian stuff, you can do so by clicking right up there. That's my second channel, House of Canada, also known as the House of Commons Highlights. Thanks so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.